Hey guys, Corey here with another concept video. Today, it's all about maintaining a stable internal environment. In this video, we'll take a look at homeostasis, negative feedback, and the stimulus response model. This process explains a lot about why you act the way you do. So let's get started. Homeostasis is a term referring to an organism's ability to maintain a stable internal environment, regardless of changing external stimuli. Humans, like most warm-blooded organisms, maintain internal balance or homeostasis, and this increases our chance of survival. Now there are many examples of variables which our body controls, but a few important ones are temperature, water levels, blood glucose levels, and internal carbon dioxide levels. Now all of these examples have tolerance limits and keeping levels inside of these tolerance limits will help organisms operate most efficiently. In the case of temperature, it's so our enzymes are at their optimum. In the case of water, this allows our cells to be in an isotonic state and not swell or shrink. In the case of carbon dioxide, it would become toxic at levels above 10%. And in the case of glucose levels, increase and decrease levels are called hypoglycemia and hypoglycemia respectively. And these can lead to serious health conditions such as diabetes. Now that we understand why homeostasis is important, let's take a look at negative feedback and the stimulus response model. Now you can think of negative feedback as the process that maintains homeostasis. Essentially, when levels of something falls outside of the normal range, negative feedback mechanisms are stimulated which bring levels back in line. This process is referred to as negative feedback as the response always reverses the stimulus. This graph will help me illustrate my point. When we get increased levels of a variable, negative feedback stimulates factors which result in the decreased levels of that variable. Commonly, levels of this variable will then overshoot and drop too low, causing more negative feedback controls, which will again increase levels of that variable and so on. In this way, negative feedback ensures homeostasis is maintained. Now to help better understand the specifics of negative feedback controls, scientists devise the stimulus response model, which we'll now go through. The stimulus response model has five main elements, and they are Stimulus, which refers to the change in condition to be detected by the organism Receptor, which refers to the detector of the stimulus and this is usually your senses, like eyes, ears, nose, mouth and skin Transmission, which refers to the relay of messages about the stimulus inside the body via nerves or hormones Effector, which refers to either muscles or glands, which will need to act on the stimulus and then finally, response, which refers to the action taken by the effectors to reverse the stimulus. Now this model helps scientists to understand specific negative response actions, and in later videos, we'll go through a few specific examples. But for now, that's it for maintaining a stable internal environment. I hope it helped, and as always, check back soon for more concept videos.